What are you eating? Who's feeding you? Oh, well, I, I go to McDonald's and, oh, oh I'm, I'm loving it. What are you in? What are you loving? Well, I'm eating chicken McNuggets. And man, them things taste good. See, do you know they go in a laboratory? See, you really got to study, man, and stop being so gullible. They go in a laboratory, and I saw it on television one day. They opened a big uh, case, and all kind of little vials were in there of different foods in a vial. You want fried chicken here. You want barbecue chicken, take this. It's a flavor. Then they put it on something that looks like clay. Make it in a liquid and, oh God Almighty. And then they color it and then they chop it up and they make it look like chicken, taste like chicken, but it ain't no chicken. As Malcolm said, you've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled. And you go out of the store feeling good, and all of a sudden, your hip is expanded. One side of you is in the Atlantic, the other side in the Pacific. The Koreans come in, hey, y'all need hair. Yes, you do. And you start saying, you know, I would like some hair. And the Koreans fix it up for you. Oh, by the way, after I get the hair, I want you to fix my nails. <laughs> get my toes, too. And what you paying for your weave? No, 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 I'm not trying to be smart. I want you to be beautiful. I ain't got no, you know, I ain't got nothing to say about being beautiful. But what I do have something to say about is economics. When you go and spend not 100, not 200, $300 for a cheap weave. And some of you have been saving for a year <laughs> to get you some hair that is over $1,000. So by the time you get married, you get married the first night <laughs> off come the hair in the draw. Now you got a Brazil butt. Off come that in the draw. The man don't know whether to get in the bed or get in the draw. Because there's more of you in the draw than what's in the bed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you are paying for this. Now, listen. That's why the Koreans don't respect us. They're doing your foot and calling you nigger. Well, if you don't like it, go someplace else. They know you can't go no place else to get hair but to them. They've, they've taken black people out of it. But your money is building Koreatown. Your money is building everybody else's part of town except where you live. There's something wrong with that picture. Now let me close. Oh, I got <laughs> God said, male and female created he them and called their name Adam. So Adam is not a man alone. Adam represents male and female as the us that makes man. 
You got it? Now what did God say to Adam? Look, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Those are commands that are written in the nature of a human being. You got to multiply. How do you multiply? Well, you know how to do that on that level. And that's getting to be tragic because you're making all these babies and you're not doing nothing to take care of them. That is very bad. So when you have a college education and you disrespect your female and you look at her as something only for pleasure and after you have pleasure you discard her but yet she's pregnant with your seed and you walk away from her as though she means nothing to you but she gave you life. How can you be educated and don't know how to respect your woman? How can you say you're educated and don't know how to protect your female? See, real college teaching make a man out of you. Real professors make you a man that is not going to play with a woman. Well, uh, all right, Farrakhan, I mean, that's enough, you know. You know, Farrakhan, as soon as you finish, I got this reefer in my pocket. And, uh, I would light up right in your face, but you got them tough-looking men around you. They may, they may come after me. Now look at what you do to yourself and you're educated. Party on the weekend. See? And some of you don't even wait till weekend. You come to class high. I'll get it, just say it. <laughs> Students. You know, I was I was high when I came here tonight. You know what I mean? Say what? See, but I'm high in another kind of way. See, when you go up into the mind of God and eat from the wisdom of God, you high all the time. And I never come down. That's the kind of high you want, the high of knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Now I'm going to leave you with this. Adam had, and Eve had two children, right? What were their name? Our first dysfunctional family. Now, Cain was the elder brother. And what was his livelihood? He was in agriculture. So he was tilling the ground doing everything that God wanted him to do and here come Abel and when it came time to present what they had to God Cain presented the fruit of the ground Abel presented God with a lamb now Abel didn't do the work to get the lamb there was a male animal involved in the us that made the sheep. The Quran says God created male and female in everything. So even to the blade of grass, there's a male and female in a blade of grass. That's the nature of this creation. So now you're going to alter God's creation. Oh boy. And you expect good results. Well, now these are two fields that God is giving us to begin independent work. One, 
farming, agriculture, to animal husbandry. And with these two, you got food, clothing, shelter, you become productive, you create employment. Now, how many of you heard about this book called the Quran that the Muslims uh, read? You should get one. We have the Bible and we study that. But you and I should all have a Quran because the Quran is like completion of the beauty of the Bible. Do you know what the first chapter of the Quran is after the opening prayer? It's called Al-Baqarah, the cow. Now most of you don't want nothing to do with a cow. But why, why you call your woman your heifer? Have you heard that term before? Uh, uh, why y'all got quiet? Samson said it. If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would never have learned the secret of my riddle. Well, for a man like Samson to refer to a woman in his life as a heifer, you think that's a derogatory term. But it's the greatest thing that a man could say to a woman if he really understood her value. How many of you heard of the 5% nation? Where's my brother? Stand, brother, yes. Now, the women that are connected to the brothers in the 5% nation, what do they call themselves? What? Earth. Earth. That's a big name. You know why we're dying? Because somebody else is poisoning the earth. And we are eating from a toxic earth, breathing a toxic air, drinking toxic water, and we have become a toxic people. See, the Indians knew how to treasure Mother Earth. If the woman is your Earth, then she's everything. Well, I'm going to say that again, man. Whatever you have on, where did it come from? the earth what are we in this came from out of the earth you want to go to the tallest building go to dubai but everything that goes up comes up out of the earth the earth is everything and if we don't take care of the earth the earth will never take care of us so any college that's teaching you biology, botany, zoology, paleontology. These are courses of study right here at this university. Get out of these SARP courses. Well, I'm, I'm studying psychology. And, you know, me and Jung, and that other guy, Freud, we hanging out all night long. I'm studying Freud. That's good. But tell me something. How come that stuff that you learn, you can't use it? No, no, no. If you got some, you're going to be a teacher? What, what is the philosophy of education? Are you studying Dewey? Are you, what are you studying as an educator? You studying methods? Whose methods? And how come you can go in a classroom and your methods don't work? 
because your psychology don't work because the mind of your babies have gone beyond the reach of your knowledge. So your children, these little ones in here, little small fellas, they in front of a computer and their hands moving. My uh, daughter had a little boy, he's my grandson, and one day my son-in-law came home and accused my daughter of messing up his computer, went in it and changed something. And she said to her husband, honey, I didn't do that. I didn't touch your computer. In other words, he said, this woman think I'm a fool. Ain't nobody in here but me and her and the little fella. <laughs> that little fella crawled to the computer, turned it on, got up, and he had a code in there. I don't know how that boy figured out the code, but he went in that computer and was finding his little games. Now listen, that's a two-year-old. You gonna mess with them with Jung and Freud and your stupidity? Come on now. You don't have nothing to deal with that kind of mind. And that's why they're offering our babies Ritalin drugs because they cannot control the baby there's nothing wrong with your children there's something wrong with the education and the so-called educators <laughs> could you do me a favor turn this over Now you wouldn't want nothing to do with the cow. But look at what having a cow and being a thinker allows man to do from the earth. From the brain of the cow, you get anti-aging cream and medicines. From the blood of the cow, they make pasta, imitation eggs, cake mixes, dyes and inks, adhesives, minerals, medicines, laboratory research materials just from the brain. From the bones, refined sugar, charcoal, fertilizer, glass. From a cow. See, when you call her your earth, you're saying it everything you need. To make life what life should be is right sitting up in a woman that we are mistreating. So when you call her earth, then honor and respect her as earth. And don't spit on the earth. Don't mistreat the earth. Take care of the earth and the earth will take care of you and me. Now look at this. From the hair of the cow, air filters, brushes, felt, insulation, plaster, textiles. From the skin, gelatin, flavorings, emery boards, sheet rock, wallpaper, adhesives, medicines, candies, and confectionery. This is from a cow. From the fat, chewing gum, candles, detergent, fabric softener, deodorant, shaving cream, perfume, pet food, cosmetics, creams and lotions, crayons, paint, oils and lubricants, biodiesel, 
plastics, waterproofing agents, cement, ceramic, chalk, explosives. Oh. That's why you can't mess with this earth, man. When she explode on us, brother, we in trouble. Fireworks, we got a lot of that coming out of the cow. Fertilizer, that's what that boy used to blow up the building in Oklahoma. Antifreeze, insulation. Linoleum, rubber, textiles, medicine. Now let's look at the manure. And you ain't through with that cow yet? From the manure you get fertilizer, nitrogen, and phosphorus. From the milk, adhesives, plastics, cosmetics, and medicines. Now you know Queen Elizabeth, I read today, drinks raw milk. She understands. How old is the woman? She up there, right? Drinking raw milk. Don't let nobody pasteurize your milk. See? So you're dying now, but you don't know it because somebody is feeding you the wrong type of food. Now, the internal organs. And if you play guitar, play the violin, you get instrument strings from the organs. Tennis racket strings from the internal organs. Hormones, enzymes, vitamins, and other medical materials from the hooves and the horns. You get adhesives, plastic, pet food, plant food, photo film, shampoo and conditioner, lamination, wallpaper, plywood. So when you say you are vegan, You better be careful how you talk. Well, I don't, I don't have nothing to do with the cow. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, let me close. I want to congratulate Dr. Wayne Watson and this wonderful Chicago State University. I want to congratulate my brother that showed me what he was doing with aquaponics and that young man is more valuable because that young man if he can show us how to create food in what they call a food desert then right here at Chicago State that is being taught what stand up brother Brother Emmanuel Pratt, doctor. Now, those of you in science, physics, chemistry, how many of you are in physics and chemistry? Raise your hands. How many? See, let me tell you something. I know you like sports. I do too. But don't let sports bring you to college and you don't take advantage of college because more than likely none of you going to make the NBA or the NFL, you know. A few might make it. But your dreams should not be that. One of the things that they said about Joe Paterno, who passed away a few days ago from the University of Penn State, <clears throat> those black football players that he made, they came back and listened to what they said. He was more than a football coach. He was our mentor. And when we left college, he made us into men. Not football players, men. That's the kind of teachers that Dr. Watson wants to draw to Chicago State University. How many of you are in astronomy? 
Wonderful. How many of you are in engineering? One, two, three, four, five. How many of you are in economics? How many of you <clears throat> taking business courses? Well, what are the rest of you taking? <laughs> Playology? Psychology? Referology? Crackology? Oh, I know, sexology. <laughs> 